Okay, uh, looks like we are, we're back. We're doing a, another little uh, road reflection. Um, like I mentioned, uh, I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to be trying to do daily videos. And right now, um, so I got, I got my uh, setup um, kind of, kind of wrapped up um, right now. Uh, I have I have I have this little door section that leads into my parents' kitchen that I've soundproofed officially. Uh, I got a little fan running as sort of a white noise machine in the background to hopefully help with uh, with any sort of sound issues going forward. Um, not that I, I don't think there was really any sound issues from the last one, other than possibly it being a little too low uh, for some of you guys. But I'm hoping that these headphones are a little bit better. Uh, the mic is a little bit closer, and I think it reads a little cleaner than the uh, than the last, uh, just a regular old Apple mic that I that I have uh, the, the old Apple headphones. These uh, my sister bought me these uh, to 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 do the videos in the car because these were just more crisp um, than uh, than what I was using before. Um, so soundproofing, uh, working on. Um, some sort of an improvement in, in just sort of the lighting condition uh, of the space as well because I'm kind of tucked in a corner, um, as you can tell, uh, and, and maybe sprucing up what's, what's fucking behind me. <laughs> uh, I, got my, I got my little, little Spider-Man guy uh, that I've had for, for a long time, as a, a, and uh, I'll, I'll move over so you guys can see him. Uh, but maybe sprucing up some stuff, the plants on one side, maybe throw something up uh, above Spidey. I don't know yet. This is a work in progress right now. Um, we're, we're looking at a long kind of quarantine situation, and I am uh, dedicated to trying to do these videos as much as I can. Uh, one of the bigger things for me, just as sort of a check-in at the top of the video, is... Um, I like to build schedules. Those kind of help my head a whole lot. And I think I have a way, uh, like I think what I'm going to do with these videos every day is kind of talk about, like I said, any sort of thing that's interesting. Um, some of it's going to deal with COVID, but not in a very direct sense anymore. I talked about um, sort of a, a, a lot of the economic issues that are that are being uh, revealed, uh, because of, because of this thing on, uh, on Taboo Table Talk. Um, I've got a bunch of interviews that I'll be releasing with that. Uh, I'm even thinking about going two times a week for, for that, but I'm not really sure. Uh, it'll really depend on how much energy I can, I can focus in during the day. Cause there's probably other stuff that I would like to do as well. Um, I do have an album that I'm trying to put out and that's going to try to take, that's going to be some effort. Um, and just keeping up with the regular kind of uh, everyday stuff that I have to do as well. So a bulk of the day, I do want to focus on writing and creating content and, um, you know, kind of staying on the pulse of things as I normally would. Uh, so creating a schedule kind of around that uh, and adjusting it every single day, uh, as well as self-care type stuff that I'm going to be trying to maintain. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I've got I've got some things uh, planned for that. So, so it's just sort of like a daily update of of the schedule, so that I'm 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 able to keep up with what's coming at me. Uh, and uh, and the other the other thing too is coming up with the schedule of events for these for these videos is also kind of important. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is sort of going to be kind of, uh, very similar to what you're seeing here. It's going to be a couple different stories, very similar to what the road reflections already have been. Um, I am just now uploading them to all platforms uh, is, is sort of where I'm going with it. Um, so it's going to be a couple different, you know, current events, news stories uh, that we will talk about and break down. Um, and go from there. And then on Friday, I'm going to do something called Philosophy Friday because everybody loves a weird alliteration. Uh, but I want to I want to concentrate on on some kind of a philosophical life quandary type um, uh, issue. 
uh, I've, I've done a few of those. Like I talked about the benefits of stoicism uh, a little while back. And uh, I really enjoyed it. A, a bunch of other people really enjoyed it. I talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, and kind of my thoughts on, on, on that. Um, people seem to really enjoy that as well. So it'll kind of be stuff like that. Um, stuff that, that's kind of, uh, you know, in the forefront of my mind, th things that I've been thinking about, whatever information I can um, siphon out of uh, the, the interwebs, uh, dealing with that, that might kind of spark some, uh, some inspiration behind it. So Friday, I'm going to kind of try to talk about those kind of ideas and, and spend, you know, however long it takes to do that. On Saturdays, I think, and I'm going to do this tomorrow, um, I have a ton of these road stories, and on an email list, I normally um, tell those road stories. I write them out, kind of have a, a you know a way to kind of uh, button them at the end, uh, that sort of stuff. And I have some very, I, I have some kind of longer stories as well that I can tell um, that I that I don't normally tell on stage, or they haven't found their way on stage. Um, and for a while, they will not be found on stage. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, so I have all these stories from uh, years of touring or just strange things that have happened in my life um, that, you know, uh, have nowhere to go. So I tell them in this email list and then I throw them up on my website. I'm still going to be doing that. Um, I have uh, a bunch of those kind of stories um, you know, I'm still going to be doing that for my email list. So if you are not subscribed to my email list, uh, please subscribe to my email list. <laughs> it would be very cool if you did. Um, and, uh, uh, but on Saturdays I will be picking one of those and telling that story. So it'll be a little bit of a different format than what you would normally get when I do it on an email list. Um, so that's Saturdays. And then on Sundays, I think I'm going to go live. I haven't done a live video on Facebook in forever, uh, so I will be doing that on Sunday. Um, so what I'll do for that is I'll keep I'll try to monitor the comments as much as I can. Um, but the way that I'll approach it is if you guys have some kind of a topic that you would like to discuss, uh, shoot me. A message on on my on my page uh, or an email those are going to be the two of the easiest ways that I'm going to see it um, and uh, if you can provide a link that's going to make things a little bit easier uh, but I probably have two or three things that I will try to talk about um, you know I I will do some preparation about these ideas you know I got my notebook uh, I will continue to have this uh, I like this. This is an organization of my thoughts, uh, so it doesn't get too rambly. And uh, um, and then we'll read through an article or two, and I'll kind of provide some thoughts along the way. Um, and we'll do that live. We'll do that uh, together. Um, you know, you guys can provide feedback. You guys can comment live, and I can respond to it. And then we'll do the same thing as we normally do. We'll chop up the episodes, and we'll throw them up on all of the platforms as well so you can digest them in smaller quantities if that is the way that you would like to consume um, this sort of stuff so so that's currently the plan that I have going um, and as we move forward with this stuff these sort of preambles these sort of check-ins uh, they're probably going to um, be shorter <laughs> we'll get to the meat of everything a lot faster uh, but this is something new. I think we're all sort of in a, in a, a major state of, um, you know, a, a really a major state of transition. We're, we're, we're really in a major state of trying to figure out what the hell is going on, um, trying to figure out how to make this work. Um, so, you know, bear with me. The production quality of this stuff is also probably going to go up in, um, in, the next, in the next few weeks as well. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll have some graphics and screen caps and things of that sort that are going to be very similar to what you see in a fully produced episode of Forkful of Noodles. Now, with that said, I also am going to be doing some Forkful of Noodles. Um, right now, I have all of my research in place for the Black Panther episode. 
uh, episodes, rather. Um, it's a matter of organizing those, that research, figuring out how I want to talk about this, uh, and then writing it, and hopefully finding, uh, finding some jokes as well, because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough topic. But I, I have some stuff. I have some ideas. Um, the other thing, too, is, and this might come out before uh, the Black Panther Party episode, is because it's, because it's, a, it's so time-sensitive, and we're kind of in it right now, is talking about um, third parties and how to create one. Um, you know, there's a lot of dem exit stuff going around. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are some interesting, inf there's some interesting information. There's some interesting history behind creating a, a third party and stuff. So, um, you know, I think uh, that's going to be the start starting point for me in terms of like uh, delving into another um, round of research and then, and then working on kind of two simultaneous pieces, uh, and hopefully within, I want to say at least a week by not this coming Sunday, but possibly the following Sunday, I will be able to record that and start releasing these episodes on a pretty consistent basis on Monday mornings. Um, that's the fingers crossed hope, uh, that I've, uh, I've kind of got. Uh, for Forkful of Noodles is, uh, is doing that. So, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my check-in. So let's dive into these stories. Let's dive into what we're going to be talking about. Uh, the first thing I want to start with is a piggybacking off of uh, what, what we saw yesterday with Tulsi Gabbard uh, dropping out of the race and endorsing Joe Biden. Now, there's a lot that I said in that, and I'm, and uh, as of now, none of those opinions have changed. I'm still pretty puzzled by her decision, um, you know, and, uh, and I, uh, you know, texted uh, my friend Ron Placone about this, and Ron wasn't surprised, and, you know, to, to some degree, um, I was surprised, but I do remember talking to a friend of mine about, uh, you know, they signed an oath or something to... Uh, support the Democratic nominee, whoever the DNC chooses uh, the Democratic nominee to be. That was something that was that was signed. And, and um, you know, I was hoping that through the Google lawsuit that Tulsi placed, through going after the DNC in the way that she did, pointing out election fraud and, uh, and, and making the focus about election transparency and election integrity the way that she did, um, you know, I was kind of hoping that she would uh, be able to prove that she doesn't need to be a part of this contract anymore uh, because the DNC has not uh, has not upheld their end of the deal. Um, and, and maybe there wasn't a, a, a way to weasel out of the contract in any any sort of way. And maybe weasel is the wrong word, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, but it's still puzzling because to me. You know, a lot of people are like, well, she's, well, she did what she said she was going to do. And she did, right? She didn't run for a third party. She was being honest about that. Um, she did back the Democratic nominee. She was being honest about that. So there's, there's sort of a lot of egg on corporate media's face right now in regards to that, in regards to, uh, you know, to, to Tulsi Gabbard. There's a lot of egg on their face, um, and rightfully so. Uh, you know, all, uh, all of a sudden now they've, they, she's become the, the corporate mainstream darling uh, after just a whole fucking year of them attacking and smearing her and lying about her. Um, and now she's sort of become an establishment darling because she, in their eyes, fell in line. Um, and even in, even in my eyes, I feel like she fell, she fell in line, right? Which, which is why I really push forward that idea that, um, you know, people like Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders and even to some degree Elizabeth Warren are mascots of a movement. They are sort of what you can put on a poster. Um, they, become, they become the iconography behind it uh, and really uh, the strength and the drive behind these movements is, is us, just regular average people uh, we are we are sort of the strength behind the movement. Now, something else popped up last night, um, you know, as I was kind of 
getting ready for bed and and doing what I normally do, which is unfortunately I scroll through social media. Uh, that's just the thing that I do. It's it's a shut off button for my brain. I don't have to think about much. Um, I saw Graham Elwood post, uh, who I like. I follow I follow Graham. I watch his show, uh, and uh, you know I saw Graham Elwood post that. Um, Jai Gabbard, Tulsi's brother, had posted something about very uh, sort of very angry uh, about basically the Bernie campaign refusing her endorsement. So, uh, you know, and it was very strange that this popped up. Right. Uh, so here I'll, I'll put up the I'll put up the tweet we'll, or, or the Facebook comment. Um, and I think it was in response to Bernie or something. It's it's kind of a strange story. Um so here it is. Here's the tweet, right? Uh, Jai Gabbard says, thank you for your kind words, sir. Uh, Bernie has treated my sister like shit all the way through this. She tried to endorse him again, and he w has refused her support. Whoever he's getting advice from has done a terrible job. Uh, you go ahead and keep talking about her however you want, but know this. She is going to continue being independent and fighting for us. Bernie isn't the man me and Tulsi once supported 100%. I don't know what happened to him. He refused to take the he he refused to take the fight to the establishment like Tulsi continues to do. Aloha to 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 you and yours. Okay, so that's that's the comment. That's the screenshot that's going around. Um Now this has not been corroborated because according to Tulsi and her and her campaign he wasn't particularly very involved in it. Um Jai Gabbard was not very involved in the campaign. Uh so this has not been corroborated that Bernie Sanders refused her support. Uh maybe I don't know. I can't say one way or the other. Uh, if he did, it super fucking sucks, you know, because she did back him in 2016 um, and she backed him all the way through uh, every single one of the smears that came his way when Elizabeth Warren was lying about Bernie Sanders back in January. That was just two months ago. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard came out and said that, you know, Bernie showed me the utmost respect. He encouraged me to run. And then... Uh, when Hillary Clinton started coming after him, she was there. When the media was lying about him and saying a bunch of shit, she was there for him. You know, and all the way back to 2016, she was there for him. So it's very, very strange that Bernie has stayed silent throughout, um, I will say, a majority of things. Uh, when back in October, when Tulsi was being smeared as some sort of a Russian puppet, and I did a whole video about uh, about the McCarthyism that was being spread at that time, um, and really talked a lot about how Aaron Mate had um, uh, disproved Russia Gate uh, through the Mueller report, uh, and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. He finally came out. Now that was that was at the midst of um, a, and this might have been opportunistic timing more than anything, uh, but that was in the midst of Bernie getting endorsed by AOC, Ilhan Omar. Rashida Tlaib, the squad, so to speak, uh, that, uh, you know, they kind of gained some fame by pushing back against uh, Nancy Pelosi. And uh, and so, like, getting their endorsement was kind of a big deal. I mean, we all knew that that was coming in October um, because they were all big Bernie supporters back in back in 2016. And that's what inspired them to run for the House of Representatives. Um, so. That was kind of a no-brainer, but it was sort of a big deal and a big announcement. So they did a big thing with it, and and corresponding with that is when Hillary Clinton called uh, Tulsi Gabbard and Jill Stein uh, Russian assets, um, because Hillary Clinton, if we know anything about Hillary Clinton, likes to jam both of her feet and all of the staff members at CNN's feet. Uh, right into her mouth. That would that's like a thing that I think she's into, um, which uh, which is tough because I you know I don't know if B Bill's uh, really into into that heavy of foot stuff. I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't know what happened on the Lolita Express. 
when he was on, when Bill Clinton was on Epstein's plane 26 times. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was on that plane 26 times because he was like, this is the only way that I can get normal sex is if I have to purchase it. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Um, but Bernie, Bernie all throughout the entire thing, though, part of, part of my criticism of Bernie, despite me continuing to be a Bernie supporter and a Tulsi supporter, um, is, you know, I will say that I haven't disavowed either of them. Uh, I'm, I'm upset and disappointed. Um, you know, I was upset and disappointed in 2016 whenever Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton finally. That was really fucking bizarre. It didn't make any goddamn sense. And same thing with this. So it's the same feeling. Now, Bernie not saying anything and continuing this rhetoric of, you know, my friend Joe Biden, my friend Joe Biden, the whole thing that he does with the my, you know, I understand being diplomatic and kind of putting on a show so that average Americans think that you guys are all buddy buddy and oh look they're rubbing elbows during the crisis isn't that adorable look at these sure man like I get it the show is important you know it's all political theater uh, policy is boring to talk about so you got to throw some panache and some theater out there um, but this is not helping the cause you know we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. The DNC is, is telling people that they need to go vote. Joe Biden is telling people that they need to go vote. Even Bernie Sanders, like, Bernie, Bernie's statement was it's a personal choice uh, and we're not going to get mad at any... Well, I get it because you got, you got old man Joe telling people to go and the DNC machine telling people to go. So some of the sheep are going to go. Some of the people that only listen to corporate media... And, and that's their source of news and that's them staying on the pulse of everything is they're going to go. Um, so how do you get your supporters to go uh, is, you know, kind of making this neutral statement. I just think it's irresponsible to be running a, a primary during um, a global pandemic. I think you should put all of those things at halt. None of that shit matters. Um, you know, so I, I felt like that was a little irresponsible for Bernie to come out and just be like, I don't think this is the right thing to do. Uh, we're not going to take any more campaign donations and we're going to kind of pause our campaign. We're not conceding. We're just kind of putting a pause on things. Um, but, you know, uh, I get it. Ber Bernie didn't, it's, it's tough because I don't think Bernie gave her, um, he just he just didn't support her throughout this whole thing, except for that one instance. You know, when when she was barred from the debate stage, uh, he didn't say a goddamn thing. There was no words from either Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if if the Bernie campaign was like, we don't want you to support us. We kind of just want you to go away and, you know, do your own thing separate from our, our, our way of thinking. Um, if, that, if that is true, it, it kind of, it sucks. You know, um, it, it, it really sucks. So uh, I hope it's not. But, you know, this is out there now. And a couple of things. If and when Bernie concedes, he is going to throw his endorsement to Joe Biden. Uh, the only person that hasn't endorsed Joe Biden is Marion Williamson, uh, who I think with if if Bernie goes into supporting Joe, so will Marianne. Right. Like that's just what's going to happen. Um, I do not see the Democratic Party getting any progressive voters. I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. That's that's just straight up. That's not why I got my citizenship in the first place. That's not why I went through that whole process. To vote for a corporate candidate? No thanks. Um, so, you know, I uh, I don't know. That's what I think. I don't know. I think um, I think the Democratic Party is done. I think we're done with the Democratic Party altogether. 
we're we're probably going to see a lot more push on the dem exit and we're really going to explore how we can start a third party and there's a lot of other people that have started something like this uh that i think we can kind of hook into and pro and propel forward um and really if we're going to do something like that we got to leave egos at the table we got to fucking put them put those egos aside and really start thinking about what's what's the right thing to do and how do we how do we get um how do we how do we push back against the corporate machine that is highly corrupt and that owns our election process? How do we do that? That's what that's what we need to look at. Um, his, Bernie's silence to Tulsi Gabbard, despite the fact that Tulsi was basically given the same treatment that he was in 2016 with a bunch of smears and attacks and um, media blackouts and things of that sort. Uh, really disappointing to see that he wouldn't come out and just make one tweet one statement something saying hey you know uh a sitting congresswoman and a and a uh, a major in the army national guard a medic an army medic um someone that has fought for the people should be allowed to debate considering she is still in the race and changing rules at the very last minute uh specifically to take her out is not okay i would have loved it would have been great uh, that did not happen. Very upsetting. Uh, I don't know if this Jai Gabbard thing is true. If it is, it's also very upsetting. Uh, but like I mentioned in the video, uh, the other, you know, yesterday is this is not the time for us to start attacking each other on the ground level. Uh, just as supporters of each of these candidates, like stop with the whole let you know calling each other names and attributing weird sexual fantasies to each other. none of that shit is helpful none of that shit matters that's not helping us get to the next stage here that's just putting a lot of um a lot of pain and hurt into the world that doesn't need to happen right now uh so i i very much hope that uh bernie supporters and tulsi supporters can um you know have a little bit of a rational dialogue with each other rather than pitting the progressives against each other. Um, because I think everybody kind of has a very evolving idea of flexibility. You know, Dr. Richard Wolff has even said that uh, words like socialism, progress, things like that, I mean, those have an evolving definition. They, uh, nobody that's within each of these camps um, really has a, uh, has a concrete defined definition. And I think that's sort of the point of it. There, there's a lot of fluidity to these ideas. Uh, to, to the philosophies of socialism, to the philosophies of progressivism. And, uh, and right now we need, to, we need to be able to coalesce, come together, uh, and really be able to, to push forward some um, new interesting ideas. So uh, let's do that. So uh, the next I, thing I want to talk about is uh, there are still economic sanctions being put on Iran, Venezuela, and Cuba. Even though we're in a global pandemic, um, the Trump administration has continued to put and, and stay firm on uh, these economic sanctions on countries like Iran, Venezuela, and Cuba, and that's not what they need. Uh, like Iran is, this, this thing is, is spiking in Iran like crazy. And, um, you know, they can't get medical supplies like essential medical supplies, they can't get them because of the sanction. That's really fucked up. Uh, and it's, uh, let's just look at Columbia University professor Jeffrey Sachs has called this immoral and illegal sanctions. And they should be. This, these sanctions are 100% should at this point be considered illegal. We're in a global pandemic. You gotta get, you gotta take these sanctions off, right? Um, Center for Economic Policy says, no doubt that Iran's capabilities to respond has been hampered by economic sanctions. Yeah. abso fucking uh, We're in a global pandemic, and everybody has to do their part in um, decreasing and alleviating uh, and finding a way to really tackle this, this thing. So, uh, at this point, imperialism doesn't matter doesn't matter who you want to conquer. doesn't matter what bullshit manifest destiny on a global scale you want to implement out into the world. Nobody gives a shit about that. Nobody, first of all, no one's ever given a shit about that. Um, 
So, you know, it's time to let that go. It's time to fucking move on, grow up and move on from that. Right. And what this also does is it exposes the fact that economic sanctions are warfare. This is economic war is what it is. We are in a state of a global pandemic and you won't allow a country to get necessary medical resources. How how is that? How is that not callous in an act of war? Right now, in a pandemic, what needs to happen is that there needs to be a mutual understanding and a treaty to be put into place so that everybody can help each other. That's what needs to happen, right? We have to put these xenophobic, hate-filled ideas, these, you know, ideas of manifest destiny that this other country, we own their shit, none of that. No, who cares? People are dying in that country. A lot of people have been exposed to this virus. They don't have a way to contain it. Um, they're doing everything that they can, but the, the people that are showing symptoms and, and you could be asymptomatic and spread the virus, right? The people that are showing the symptoms, um, and the people that are actually getting sick because of it, well, they don't have a way to, to get through it. They just don't because they don't have a way to get supplies and necessary equipment. Because the United States has said, well, you've been bad. You didn't let us incite a coup. You got mad whenever we illegally murdered your general on a peace mission. That, that was bullshit. You should have just let us kill whoever we wanted. This is, this is, we're, we're mad at you. And now you, you don't get your medicine because America is mad. Look, if we get to that point, right, where we look at a global pandemic and we can say that we're going to put a treaty in place and we're going to chill out and we're going to make sure that we, we can all help each other out in the way that we need to, we're all going to listen to each other, we're all going to figure out what works, what doesn't, we're going to do this on a global scale because everywhere it's, we're, we're being affected on a global, global scale, uh, it will probably start revealing once and for all, that, uh, that, uh, that, that war is completely unnecessary. There's virtually no need for it. And uh, what we need is more global cooperation, uh, which, is just a, which is just far more logical and beneficial to everybody, right? Um, it would probably eradicate racism. It would probably eradicate... Uh, uh, xenophobia and and not understanding another culture and where they come from and how to uh, you know uh, assimilate to each other uh, you be respectful to each other um, look at different ideas and instead of looking at different ideas and saying well I got to kill that different idea we can go hmm that's cool I get I mean they can they have their idea over there I have my idea over there we still seem to be working together uh, you know the, the the big stuff would matter a lot more uh, keeping these sanctions, not being, not letting them get their medical supplies and not being able to contain the virus the way that I think they need to contain it, the way that I think they're looking to contain it. Uh, it's, it's going to make this worse. These economic sanctions are going to make this worse because now the virus is going to spread a lot faster and a lot more. Um, you know, that's the domino effect right there. That's where the domino effect really lies. Uh, and, you know, based on all of this information, it's very easy to see why Iran believes that they're uh, under some sort of biological attack, that this is some sort of biological warfare that's being used against them. Right. Because the sanctions are being put in place. They can't help their people. The United States is holding them back. Uh, and uh, and this thing is spreading around their country like wildfire. And they don't know what the fuck to do. They don't know how to help. And it's and they're going nuts. They're going nuts. They're like, what the fuck? What you know, what is? And, and of course they believe it. Kim Iverson did a video about that. 
where where there were stories coming out of Iran, like top officials saying that this is some kind of bioweapon that has been released specifically to attack Iran. And it's looking like it's around the world, uh, but all the countries that have had uh, major effects, like over 10,000 people infected or something like that, are all countries that the United States is um, less than friendly with, you know. I mean, when you're going to put that in place, right, like it makes sense as to why somebody would believe that, especially in a moment of that much stress and desperation, like your mind thinks about those things. And now they're thinking about those things on a on a countrywide scale, because like, the, yeah, I mean, if the United States was not sending this, you know, trying to um, trying to collapse the country so that they can come in and be like we are your saviors with democracy voting like if they weren't going to do then they would have been like yeah we're going to lift the sanction because this is a crazy fucking situation that we're all in now for everything i've said in the last few minutes you can replace the word iran uh virtually for everything you can replace the word iran with venezuela and cuba and the same thing applies Cuba started to see some cases, Venezuela is seeing some cases, um, and these economic sanctions on these countries are not allowing them to get the resources that they need. Um, you know, Venezuela specifically was, they don't, they got their money lost. The, the sanctions on them, Citgo is, is a Venezuelan company, um, and they couldn't get like, billions of dollars worth of... Uh, um, income for their country and uh, that, I mean that's just bullshit total bullshit right there uh, so yeah I think that at this point um, a lot of that doesn't matter you know taking care of each other matters uh, coming up with a viable solution for this pandemic matters. Uh, but your war and your uh, need to, you know, be in power or push a narrative that you are the uh, strongest country in the whole world, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These narratives are no longer very important what's important is helping each other out and making sure uh that we contain this thing and can move forward we can get to a point where um you know we can get back to our lives the way that we want to get back to our lives that's that's what matters at this point so uh the final story also has to do with uh with some economic stuff um I saw this this morning and I was, I was, you know, I was like, wow, we're still doing this, huh? We're, we're still here. And uh, Dianne Feinstein, Richard Burr, uh, and a couple other Republican senators have had sold stocks right before the market crash because of COVID. Right before the COVID crash, they sold off their stocks, right? Dianne Feinstein, um, who's part of the Senate Judiciary Committee, ooh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, you mean the committee that was all about catching Trump for fraud? <laughs> Sold $1.5 to $6 million in stocks right before the market crashed. Richard Burr sold about $500,000 to $1.6 million in hotel stocks, right? Uh, people in the hospitality industry are hit pretty hard by this, by all of this. They're hit very, very hard by all of this, right? And he just made money off of it. He made money off of people losing their jobs. He knew that that was coming, and instead of trying to take precautionary measures for this, he was just like, no, I'll enrich myself. It's all about me, baby. James Inhofe uh, from Oklahoma. Kelly uh, Loeffler from Georgia are also involved in this. You know what? Here's what I was say. This is a nice positive thing that I'm going to say. It is so nice uh, to shit on Republicans again uh, for like just a minute. <laughs> Just like a minute to be like, ah, oh, we're back. This is, this is where my career started, is going after Republican bullshit. You know, fucking going back to the basics. It's nice. It's nice to go back to the basics, you know, and shit on some fucking 
corporate corrupt ass Republicans that don't give a shit about the people and we're trying to fucking load up their pockets. Oh, it feels good. So all these people enrich themselves by selling their stocks and all this shit. Uh, and they made millions of dollars. And here's the thing. If you want to prove that trickle-down economics actually fucking works, what you can do is uh, take all of that money and then give it back to the people from which you stole it from. Right? Feinstein got it from, like, bio, selling biotech stocks or some shit, you know, and... and whoever Inhofe sold his stocks from and, and this Kelly Loeffler and uh, Burr sealing it from, from the hospitality industry, well, great. Now you can give all the people that are out of work from those industries the money that you, that you stole from them. Seems fair. Seems fair. Considering what you did is called insider trading and it's motherfucking illegal. These people belong in prison. These people belong in prison. These are real criminals. Uh, and, you know, we, we, these people stole money. They played this insider stock baseball game that they do because it's, because it's what the stock exchange in Wall Street is. It's just play, it's just play time for rich people. It's just a mascot for rich people's money. It's how popular they are. That's it. We're not invited in it. We're not a part of that economy. We have our separate economy that's currently not doing well. Because we can't just inject money into our own economy. We control it. That's what they don't want us to see. So they stole a bunch of money and they need to go to prison. Here's how prisoners are treated, by the way. Uh, West Virginia charges their prisoners about three cents a minute to read books. They have like an ebook thing. It's three cents a minute. That's an hour of pay for every minute that they want to read a book. Okay. I think these hucksters should be charged three cents a second for, for a fraud. For every second of fraud they committed, they should pay out three cents. Uh, and by that, by the end of that, I mean, we'd be able to research, fund fucking research to cure a shit ton of diseases. No problem. No problem. On a last bit of note on this thing, I will say that, um, so I just saw right before I recorded that uh, filing taxes is now going to be on July 15th and not April 15th. Mnuchin, Mnuchin came out and said that. Uh, great. I don't understand why it took so long, but fine. Uh, he's sending out checks directly to American people. Um, I think that it's coming in two parts. It's based on your income or something along those lines. Um, I just think you should, you know, fucking find a flat rate for everybody making under a million bucks. Hey, you know, we really think $2,000 is going to help you. Bam. Uh, send out those checks. Um, he's instating the UBI. And uh, hopefully that comes through for everybody that needs it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I would, I would love that. That would fucking alleviate a shit ton of stress for me, um, especially going back out on the road. After all this is done, uh, we're looking at 45 days from Monday is sort of the projection that we're talking about. That's a, um, that's a month and a half, you know, solid six weeks um, that we are, we are going to... Uh, we're going to be down the tubes on this shit. Uh, so, you know, to get the economy back on track so that these small businesses don't die out and people don't get pissed off at the government, the, the Trump administration specifically, uh, he's bailing out people. Now, what I do want to say about this, and I kind of, I didn't hit this as hard as I think I should have in the last piece that I put out. Um, is, look, that doesn't mean that we don't need moratoriums. I know he's got moratoriums on foreclosures and evictions, but we need moratoriums on loans, any sort of debt-related thing, credit cards. We need moratoriums on flights right now. Why are you bailing out the flight industry when they're not offering refunds to anybody? Um, 
you know, it, it, the the bailouts aren't really going to affect the fucking workers. Airline workers aren't looking at that bailout at all. They don't get to fucking see it. That's all going to prop up their stocks or these dumb, invisible things that don't fucking matter. Uh, what this means is if you're going to inject a 1000 or $2,000 into the American people by giving them these stimulus checks, um, this does not mean that that we don't need a moratorium. This is because the moratorium was necessary, but we also have to look beyond that into what is the next phase? How do we keep the economy running when when all this shit is over? You know, people are people are going stir crazy and when they come out of this thing and they don't have money to do things, that's not fucking good either. So that's what that's going to take care of. It's going to take care of things for after uh, all of this shit is done. And then we can resume the, uh, things as, as, as they were planned. No interest bullshit. No, you missed a payment, so here's some late... Tr- no, that none of... The, it's it's got to be... Both of these things have to operate in tandem in order to in order to 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 survive this thing on an economic front. Diane Feinstein, that's what they did. Diane Feinstein, Richard Burr, James Inhofe, Kelly Blofler, all these people secured their they secured themselves so when they come out of it, they're fucking way well off. And then they can purchase all these stocks back up again. They secured themselves for their future, and now we have a way, we have a methodology in place that can do that, and I think we really should be playing it smart and make sure if, if I mean, if Trump, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the guy. I don't like him. Uh, not going to vote for him, I don't think, uh, but I think he's securing the election. Um, you know, I really do, because if he instates this UBI during this crisis, puts a moratorium like Bernie Sanders has been talking about, uh, and, uh, and takes care of the American people, I think people will immediately forget that his lack of um, funding, of this, uh, funding of research and, and you know, anti-academic stances uh, is is kind of part of the reason why we got us here, and now he's kind of trying to correct that. And fine, good, correct it, right? Like help us help the people that you fucked over out. Super important. Let's also look forward beyond this thing, and let's think about preventative ways that we could have done this better, and put a plan into place so that when this thing happens again in another two decades. Uh, we, we're prepared. We have an idea of what to do. Rich people are already doing that shit. It's time that we kind of, the regular people also got an opportunity to, uh, you know, be a part of that, be a part of that plan. So, all right, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, like I said, uh, we're putting out videos every day. There's a nice little schedule that I'm going to be coming up with that I'm going to solidify. Uh, Philosophy Fridays, doing storytelling on, on Saturday, uh, going live on Sunday. Every other day, it'll be sort of very similar to what this video was, um, keeping up and working on some ad- adjustable uh, scheduling and things of that sort. Um, throughout uh, throughout the weeks. Stay safe. Um, take care of each other. Uh, don't hoard shit. Don't do that. Um, you know, if, if you got an elderly neighbor, make sure they're, they're doing okay. Make sure they're kind of staying educated on what they need to stay educated on. Help them out if they need groceries and, and things of that sort. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, uh, there's lots of people that need help not just in the artist community, but in the, in the service industry as well. Uh, if, if you are particularly feel inclined, feel moved uh, by the spirits in the universe or whatever it is, uh, to, to become a sustaining member of what I'm doing or make a one-time donation uh, to what I'm doing, um, pl- please go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate 
uh, you can make a one-time donation there. You can make a sustaining membership uh, patronage there. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, if you can, I totally understand. It's a tough time for everybody. Uh, but the biggest thing you can do is like, subscribe, share. Get the word out about these videos. Uh, show it to people that, you know, are, uh, are either interested in this topic or, or would like to be interested in this topic, would like to get something different. Um, so, uh, yeah, sharing is, is a big way to, to help. Uh, and hopefully when all this stuff is done, I hope to see you guys uh, at a live show. Uh, keep up to date by following my website and all of my social feeds. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you on the road.